Hello, my name is Karen Ballard and I'm the Trombone and Euphonium Professor here at Washburn University. Today I'm going to go over the Kansas District and State Band excerpts. Washburn alumni Kai McCormack will be playing them for you. This year's selections come from Georges Alari's contest piece. He was a French composer in the late 19th century. Knowing this, it's important not to play too heavy of articulation in this piece. Let's keep it light. Before we go too far into it, let's talk about the errors on the sheet music because there are a few. Please make sure you have these notated on your part. In measure 11, the correct note for beat two should be a concert F quarter note above the staff. In measure 53, the very last note of the measure should be a concert A natural on the top line of the bass clef. And in measure 116, beat three should be a concert C quarter note, one ledger line above the staff. Three measures from the end, the first note of the measure should be a concert high B flat. Sometimes one of the ledger lines is missing, so it may look like a G, but it's actually a B flat. All right, now let's get to it. In the opening excerpt, measures 7 through 23, the tempo stated is andante non lento, which roughly translates to walking tempo, not too slow. We still want to make sure that there is a contrast in tempo between this section and the rest of the piece, so we don't want to go too fast either. Kyle will be playing at roughly quarter is about 78. Rhythmic integrity is probably the name of the game in this piece. It is important that the dotted 8 16th notes do not resemble a triplet figure in any way. To do this, you have to subdivide. Kaim will play it both ways, correct and then triplified, so you can hear the difference. Now in measures 15 through 18, let there be some contrast in style and dynamics to make it more interesting for both you and the listener. Please note that in measure 16, the G and the A are both flat, where in measure 18, the G and the A are both natural, so don't let those measures sound the same. Next up is the quintuplet. How do you count that? There are numerous ways to count that rhythm out. Some people use one, two, three, four, five. Some people say the word hippopotamus, university. There are a lot of different ways. Any word or phrase that has five syllables, those quintuplet, um, can be used for you to kind of count that out on your own. Let the notes be even so they don't sound like two eighth notes followed by a triplet or even one eighth note followed by four random notes. Kaim will play examples of both ways. The next excerpt is measures 52 through 63, Allegro Energico, can be interpreted fast and quickly with energy or energetically. Some metronomes say Allegro is from 110 to 132, while others say 120 through 156. There's a lot of wiggle room there. So while I suggest quarter note equals 132, which is how fast we'll go today, it's important to never go faster than you can play it cleanly. We don't want to have any sloppy playing. Playing fast can sound impressive, but not when you're tripping over half the notes. Each note should have a clear front with a centered tone. If that can't be done at the tempo you want to play it at, then you should drop it down a few notches down to the tempo you need to play it at.
Now with this section, make sure in measures 52 that the eighth note on the and of four is indeed an eighth note and not played as a triplet figure. Once again, to achieve this, you have to subdivide. Kaim will play examples of both ways for you to hear the difference. And while we're talking about subdividing, let's also do it in the next measure, 53, so we're not laid off that tied note. Now we have dotted eight sixteenth notes and triplets happening in the same musical phrase. It's super important that they sound different, that they're rhythmically precise. In measure 57, I recommend playing the D between the B naturals in the fourth position. You'll have to adjust the slide slightly, so moving the slide a tad farther when coming from the B natural and then move it back in to play the, D natural, the B natural because accidentals carry through the measure, so it is still B natural. Next, dynamics, let's talk about those. Notice that this excerpt starts at fortissimo and isn't notated as a change until measure 60. First of all, never play a dynamic that is not beautiful. Fortissimo does not mean to blow the walls down. Remember earlier that I said this is a French piece, so fortissimo marking in this piece is not the same as the fortissimo marking in your marching band or pet band music. And secondly, if you play a very full dynamic for that long with no difference, it can be very overwhelming for that long for the audience, and it's kind of off-putting. I would recommend starting at about a forte and maybe doing a slight crescendo through the repeated B flats. You could do something similar on the next entrance on the repeated concert Cs as well. Note the accent on beat four in measure 59. Don't hammer it, just give it a little oomph, and then immediately drop the dynamic down on the downbeat of the next measure. Measure 60 says mezzo forte, but I would possibly even go even softer to a mezzo piano to make a bigger contrast for a greater build to the end of this excerpt. I like doing a four bar crescendo all the way to the high F, but once again, don't play louder than beautiful. And also, please pay particular attention to the rhythm in measure 62. Don't be laid off the died G note, and make sure that the dotted eight sixteenth notes are not played like triplets. The last excerpt is from 110 to the end of the piece, and it should be played at the same tempo as the previous Allegro Energy Co. section. <laughs> In measure 115, you'll see a different notation on the eighth notes in that bar. They have a little line through each stem. This notation means that you take the value of the note head and play two notes instead of one. So in short, 16th notes. You play two notes for every eighth note. The first six notes of the bar, all except the quarter note on beat four, will all be 16th notes. It is common practice for this bar to be played double tongue, and I recommend using the syllables tuku tuku or dugga dugga. If you are only single tonguing this measure, though, it is potentially slow down because your tongue can't keep up at that tempo if you go to a certain, obviously, speed. That being said, remember that you shouldn't go faster than you can play cleanly, so if you need to slow the other parts down, do that. And don't forget that any kind of articulation, single or multiple, is important to keep the air always moving forward. When the tongue interacts with the air, it can cut it off completely if you're not careful. So please allow the air to lead the way and let the tongue just ricochet off of it, not to obstruct it. When you play a wind instrument, the wind is pretty important. In measure 123, I recommend playing all of the Ds in the lowered fourth position. And watch out for the style change in measures 128 and 129, but don't let them sound swung. 
A soft, clear do syllable will help, and also observing the note groupings as well. Let's talk again about dynamics. Once again, there is a fortissimo written at the beginning of the measure in 111, and then that's it for the whole piece. Please, please, please do not play this whole last excerpt at that dynamic. You have to shape the phrases with hairpins. If the pitches is end, let the dynamic as well. If the line goes down, let the volume go down as well. I like to bring the dynamic down at 118 and then build it all the way to the high A flat in measure 126. After the A flat, I like to decrescendo the line to 122. And then I like to come back on the, on the triplets at a solid forte and do a steady build to the high B flat at the end. Gives a nice pizzazz at the end. Keep in mind that the notes after the high B flat are going to sound softer because they're a great deal lower in pitch, but we don't want that effect because it would ruin the end of the piece. Keep the intensity and energy up all the way to the end of the last B flat. I prefer to put a small retard on the last two notes for a more decisive and deliberate ending. Playing the D half note slightly longer in duration will achieve that effect. Well, there you have this year's Kansas and District State Band Audition excerpt for trombone. I hope this brief tutorial has helped you, and if you have any questions about anything I said, please feel free to contact me. Good luck on your audition, and please don't forget to have fun making music.